Old Side Sports Fishing. How are you, mate? Well, we're very good today. Thanks, John. How are you? Well, all the better for the second time round because I forgot to turn the switch on for the first time round. Nah, you're all good, <laughs> mate. I don't remember that happening. Oh, I don't know about the look on your face when I told you, but anyhow, that's all good. We only talked for 20 minutes, didn't we? Yeah, something like that. Getting silly as I get older, mate, but not to worry. Mate, uh, Wild Side Sports Fishing, you've fished all around Australia. You're a Franganistan boy to start with. Originally from Franganistan, yeah. Born in Frankston Hospital, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but from Mornington, Mornington yep. boy. Um, but yeah, we have uh, we lived all over the place uh, in Queensland and spent about 12 years up in Darwin. And, and we've been here for a while now and, and loving it. Yeah. Fantastic. You were a chartery in uh, Darwin as well as a commercial uh, boat operator, yeah? Yeah, so I was in uh, marine construction and oil and gas up there. Um, for a few years, but also spent a, a hell of a lot of that time as a fishing guide. Yep. Yeah, lovely. And uh, come back to here, started a family. What's the best place in Australia? Southwest Rocks. It is, isn't it? You're standing it? in it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to keep coming back to it, I think. Mate, uh, you've really taken uh, Southwest Rocks by storm. You've been here for about 12 months now, but you're, you're not doing uh, what a lot of other people, you're really concentrating a lot on lure fishing as well. I mean, obviously, you've got to do some bait fishing at times, but you're concentrating on the lures? Yeah, we try to con we're trying to do things differently to the other operators that are here. I mean, not trying to steal their clients or crowd out anybody else. Um, and also because I love uh, I love lure fishing. Yeah, it's a it's a real new age way of fishing for me. Being an old boat soaker, <laughs> boat soak bait soaker. Yeah, look, we still soak bait. You yeah. know, we're always going to use whatever we think is going to work best on the day. Um, but we certainly get a lot of uh, fish on lures. You know, mm. which is uh, we've been getting a lot of snapper lately on soft plastics. And uh, and there's guys I know that fish really really effectively with bait that aren't catching them. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, we're getting them on the soft lures, and um, and you know our clients are really excited to, to learn new techniques. Absolutely, and that's all, and that's the thing I always recommend to people when they come into a town, whether they've got a boat or not themselves, get on a charter and learn some tricks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can certainly show you a few things. Obviously, um, we've got to blindfold you when we take you to the spots. <laughs> and no GPS is allowed. Uh, <laughs> no, but look, at the end of the day, the fish fish move here a lot. Um, so you're certainly going to learn a few things, and uh, but yeah, the fish can move overnight, and the water, well, even during, within a few hours, the water moves around. Back eddies here a lot, so yeah. But we fish both in uh, in the river, and but mainly offshore is um, probably what we specialise in, and uh, yeah, a lot of good fish. Mate, it's uh, pea soup up there at the moment. I mean, we've had a tough season. Let's face it, with with fires, floods. I mean, we've had so much rain Mother coming down as well. Mother Nature's given us a flogging. It has. But at the end of the day, uh, the rain we needed it poorly. You know, uh, well, it was quite severe. Uh, the drought inland New South Wales, as most people know, um, we had a drought here as well, um, and you know, the rain has just been so sorely needed. So. Fantastic for the long run. Let it rain. Fantastic, but uh, we, we know it can stop now. We've <laughs> yeah. had it up. Have a look at this river. She's, she's, she's brown. Oh, please. Nice chocolate. Absolutely. But the interesting thing is, is we were just talking to a couple of the locals here as well. I've seen it myself. I've spoken to a number of the travellers through here as well. They reckon the river is fishing better than you've ever seen it, it's particularly the brim and the whitey, even on the beaches. Incredible bread and butter fishing at the moment. Yep. Most of the fish, obviously, that are up the river have come down. Yep. You know, and, uh, and down around the river mouth and on the beach. So, yeah, we've uh, we've seen huge numbers of brim and whiting around the place. So for people fishing off the, you know, even in their own little boats, off the bank, on the beach, you know, big smiles. It is the it, it really is Southwest Rocks is the place for any boat owner. Yeah, it's a great spot to visit, and uh, we certainly cater for for you know all the holiday makers. Whether you got your own boat, whether you're a kayaker, whether you're uh, you know, you just uh, come out in the fishing charter, you know, like the boys that got off the boat today, they did three days, and uh, well, we got dolphin fish, kingfish, um, we had sapper, mackerel, so yeah, we had a few, quite a few different species, plus, uh, you know, all your different uh, smaller tuners and stuff, so, yep. yeah, yeah, it's plenty of variety. It is, and uh, interesting to hear you talking to, you're not even counting the mac tuna and the frigates and things like that, you know, that's just bait species. Bait species yeah. Well, for a lot of people, you know, they're, yeah. they're great fun, I remember growing up, you know, we would have given anything to catch yeah. a few tuna in Port Phillip Bay, Absolutely. especially in the 90s. Yep. Um, you know, they've come back hard now, but um, yeah, look, I guess uh, when you have so many on tap, you get a bit blase, and there's, there's acres of mac tuna at the moment, you can walk across them. Yeah, I saw that. Mate, the, uh, you've really got southwest rocks where the north meets the south, so you've got that mix of species, you've got everything. You know, this time of year we should have a lot more little black marlin floating around just at the uh, underneath the, the jail on the point, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they come in really close. So, um, yeah, 
I guess even around uh, in the bay, they, they end up uh, around people swimming and stuff in the past. Um, my mate Mitch uh, from uh, Outdoor Adventure Southwest Rocks, um, he's caught the money stand up paddleboard out there. Unbelievable. Rip a little bloke too if you need a bit of tackle while you're here. Yeah, stop in. Stop yeah. in and see him. He'll look after you. They're a great bunch of guys in there. Yep. Um, well stocked store too. Yep, well stocked. And, uh, and also around the back, you got the divers. We've got a world-class dive site here, yeah. um, absolute world-class. Um, Fish Rock, which has got the cave through it. Yep. So a fantastic place. You come here and do, do some world-class diving. You can do stand-up paddle boarding. Come and do a bit of fishing, um, you know, kayaking, whatever you want to do. There's some. Don't, don't forget those, uh, the, the grey nurse and the hammerheads down around Fish Rock and that too. Yep, yeah, they get, I think uh, they, the hammerheads are in here normally around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. You'd have to check with the guys. And uh, from my understanding, Grey Nurse is most of the year. Yeah, it's so, amazing, isn't it? Just famous. For the fishermen, though, the river itself has got everything. I mean, we've heard of cobia and uh, and kingfish right up, you know, miles up the stream, up as far as Kempsey. Yeah, well, there's been a few cobia caught in here recently. Yep. Um, they come in most years, um, you know, push in with the tide, and, you know, they eat all sorts of stuff. You catch them on a dead bait, live bait on the lure. Yep. Sometimes on a popper. Um, so, yeah, but we get kingfish, uh, obviously big Big Jewfish, the river's famous for Mulloway. Yep. Uh, yeah, Mulloway excite me, there's no doubt about it. And there's a few yeah. around, it, with, especially with the dirty waterfall moons. Yeah, or... look, there's, they've been a, bit, a little bit quiet lately. Yeah, I expect them to pick up. Normally with the dirty water, they're good. Um, I've heard of a few hooked. I've certainly caught a lot since I've been here. Mm. I've caught plenty of Mulloway, and uh, there's times there we get them every trip. You know, so if it's a bit quiet outside or if the guys want to try and catch a jewfish, yeah, we quite often stop on the way in and yep. and pick up a few. So as you can sort of see with the photos. It's amazing, isn't it? Which is the fish of a lifetime for so many people and you you can basically get them, well, let's not say every trip, consistent. but they're pretty consistent. Yeah, yeah. as far as, um, you know, as consistent as they can be, yep. you know, like Mulloway. Um, you know, they call them the, the ghosts of the estuary. Mm. Um, you know, they're fairly consistent through here. We, we, we're really lucky and we also get them offshore. Yep. Um, you know, on the reefs, so um, quite often pick them up when we're fishing for snapper or for mackerel, you know, on the live bait, especially if it's down deep. Yep. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah I mean, a, we get a real range of species, as you said, mixture of temperate and uh, tropical. It's, and look, so many options too. I mean, you go north to grassy, you've got miles and miles and miles of reef structure yep. pushing out to what? 30 fathoms or something, I don't know how far yeah, it goes. Yeah, it goes well, well past 100, Does it? 100, yeah, 100 metres. Yeah, 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 you can get yeah. it. Well, there's reef right out past 100 metres. Um, but yeah, there's, as you said, there's miles of it. Yeah. So yeah, from basically all the way north, right up, we get up towards uh, Nambucca and Vala, um, you know, and there's even further afield, there's plenty of reef. So, yeah. and then further south as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit here, it especially is. when it's on. No doubt. How far to the shelf? Uh, it's about 12 nautical mile from the bay. Which is pretty good. Yeah, it's really it's close. close. One of the yeah. closest spots on the coast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, almost the same as Birmingham, isn't it? Uh, it's what's what's Birmingham? Yeah, 12 mile. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it could be miles, not nautical miles, though. But anyhow, it is nice and close. You've got great access. Mate, the bar can be a bugger. Get a bit of local knowledge on the bar, yeah? Yeah, look, uh, if, you, if you're not sure on the bar, it probably pays to come out with an, with an operator or uh, at least ask locals yep. um, because it is dangerous this bar. Yep. Um, the, the thing to remember is try to avoid the last part of the outgoing tide mm. with an incoming sea state, you know, with an incoming swell or wind or anything that's because you get the two um, forces opposing each other. Absolutely. Keep that nose trimmed up so you don't run into that pressure trough, yeah? Try to keep your nose up, yep. yep. Yeah, and watch what's going on. So take your time. Try not to launch from every wave. Yep. It's like jumping over bike, a bike jump as a kid, you know. Take your time. Mate, tell us about this beautiful boat we're in. It's an American contender, yeah? Yeah, it's an American. Uh, it's basically a contender 25 tournament. Um, and it's got twin 200 uh, Yamahas on the back. Yep. Uh, 660 litres under floor. It's got three 12-inch uh, Simrad sounders on it. Um, yeah, so total scan, uh, which is your yeah, side scan, down scan. Um, it's got low, uh, medium, high chirp. So yeah, three different transducers. Um, so yeah, she's got all the bells and whistles. Helps. Mate, you'll fry the fish before you get them up. Helps us find a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just go and net them. <laughs> That's it. Um, it. It look, it's a full survey boat, full foam under floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's fully two C survey. Um, surveyed for uh, myself and four clients. Yep. 
Um, and that's a good number on board too. And I mean, I used to run charters, mate. You hate taking more than four or five people on board. Yeah, look, it depends what you do, but um, I personally I prefer it. I work closely with our clients. I teach. I like to work closely with each person on the boat and show them a few things if they need it. Yep. Um, it also gives people room to cast um, and move move around the deck freely and that sort of thing. So. And you're not spending the whole day undoing tangles. Oh, look, we have a <laughs> we have a few tangles, um, but you know, at the end of the day, that's all part of it. You got you got to crack eggs to make omelets. So Absolutely. Say. Well, mate, your success rate is great. I'll be flashing through the photos and the video while you're talking here. Um, what's the best thing about your contender? Is it the ride? The ride at sea, it's yep. it's just a magic boat. And there's not a person I've taken that hasn't fallen in love with it. Yep. And every day I get in it, uh, I think, you know, how fantastic it is. And, uh, you know, I'm stoked. Uh, and hopefully it, uh, it continues. Uh, well, I've got to say, there's a big smile on your face there, not only from your boat and the fishing down here. You've uh, made a complete life in South West Rocks, and uh, I think you're a very lucky man. Well done, Jase. Thanks. Thanks, John. <laughs> Good on you. I appreciate it, mate. Well done.